You're listening to the Pharmacy Podcast Network. No one has ever made an impact by standing on the sidelines, whimpering, complaining, or protesting without taking action. We make progress by implementing our ideas. Pharmacists must take action. This is Polititalk Rx, the highly charged, sometimes controversial, political internet radio talk show dedicated to the profession of pharmacy. The policies that shape our healthcare system are complex and pharmacists, pharmacy professionals, and industry stakeholders must have a seat at the table to participate in conversations, discussions, and debates, which lead to actions that drive change supporting the profession of pharmacy. This podcast is intended to shake up the status quo and promote change to promote the profession of pharmacy while advocating for better patient care delivered by pharmacists. Polititalk Rx is part of the U.S. healthcare system's largest and most influential network of podcasts dedicated to our profession, the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Hi, this is Eugene D. Pasquale, Pennsylvania Auditor General, and you're listening to the Pharmacy Podcast. Hey, Pharmacy Podcast Nation, welcome to Polititalk Rx. This is Todd Urey, founder of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Dr. Scott Chelson couldn't cover today's show because it was a last minute opportunity. And there was absolutely no way that we wanted to miss out on an interview with something so hot right now with regards to the coming of what is known as the PBM reform, or better yet, pharmacy benefit managers really understanding how they work, how the payments are working, DIR fees. And I don't have to tell you, listener, uh, pharmacy owner, pharmacy professional, you know exactly what's uh, been going on for quite some time. So we're excited about this. The state of Pennsylvania, my home state, is, is basically following and, and picking up the microscope, per se, and looking into the world of PBMs now. So uh, we understand our brother, uh, sister state, Ohio, went through a Medicaid audit with regards to their PBMs and how that's been changing some things. There's transparency that's been demanded. I am so excited today that we're going to bring on the Auditor General, Mr. D. Pasquale. Welcome to the Pharmacy Podcast. Uh, thanks, Todd. Th- thanks for having me. And also great to have a, a discussion with a fellow Pittsburgher. Can I go as far as saying a, a fellow Steeler fan? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I know there may be some New England fans on this. I'm very sorry for what we did to the Patriots <laughs> this weekend, um, but I, I don't really feel a need to apologize after what they've done to us for the last several years. That's very true. And you know what? I still think that we're the most consistent, inconsistent team in the NFL. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. The weapons we have on offense are as good as any team in the league. Um, but we have blown some pretty big third quarter or fourth quarter leads. So uh, the defense, especially against New England, that's the best I've seen them in a couple years. Uh, that was a tremendous effort against obviously a very talented team. Offensive line isn't what it used to be. Obviously Brady's 41, but still a lot of weapons, really good. And and Brady still is a very, very tough to beat quarterback. So that was that was a heck of an effort by the defense. Exactly. And I, I – I think that we're in a stage now, it's playoff time and we're getting closer and that's where the excitement for me really starts. And so I'm so excited to have you here. Um, it, this is an honor for us. Pharmacy oh. Podcast Network is excited to be able to, to have Polititalk RX host um, a show digging into this PBM auditing PBM reform that we're all going through. I think it's going to accelerate. But before I go into that, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and how you became the Auditor General General for the great state of Pennsylvania. Uh, so, uh, born and raised in Pittsburgh, uh, college in Ohio, actually, Worcester, Ohio. Uh, went to the College of Worcester there, uh, played some baseball and football, great school, loved it. Came back, graduate school uh, at Pitt. And then I, I got my law degree at Widener University in their evening program. In 2006, I was elected to the Pennsylvania legislature, um, served three terms there. And in 2012, I was elected uh, state auditor general. In my time in the legislature, I became known as a reformer. 
Um, and the Auditor General's job is basically to make sure the taxpayer dollars are spent legally and effectively. So my background is both an attorney and as a legislator, I believe made me um, well suited for the job and the public agreed. I was elected in 2012, reelected in 2016. We have found about a billion dollars in saving. We've cracked down on untested rape kits. We've improved the child protection system in Pennsylvania. Um, just uh, recently, we had a major announcement that because of our audit, uh, we've improved the job creation program in the state of Pennsylvania. So I feel we've made a lot of great strides in my six years in office. But obviously, um, when it comes to the topic we're going to talk about, the cost of prescription drugs and the health care of the people in Pennsylvania is uh, of top importance. Eugene, I sit around the table with my family, especially during the holidays, just got done with Thanksgiving, coming into the Christmas season. And the very first thing they look to me for is answers regarding the pharmacy industry just because I'm a podcaster. And I have to tell them, listen, I'm a technologist. I'm a marketer. I'm a business guy. I don't understand the world of PBMs. But for the layperson, and it's, it's funny, we get people listening to the show based on the keywords of the show. And this is going to be picked up by a, a lot of different podcasting channels and to simplify from my perspective as someone that's been in the industry since 2004, we know that a pharmacy benefit manager, I know what they do. Uh, they're able, it's basically insurance for your pharmacy, insurance for your medications. And when a customer or the, the layperson who doesn't understand that, when they're standing in front of the counter, they're looking at the pharmacist or they're looking at the technician, Sometimes there's a lot of frustration between those two individuals because of not understanding, not understanding from a myriad of reasons, definitely transparency, definitely what is a PBM, what does that even stand for? There's going to be a mixture during this program, Eugene. We're going to talk from a professional perspective, but I also want to shift gears and be able to educate the public too. Uh, I think we'll be able to get it done in about 20, 22 minutes. Um, and and it's, it's exciting to see you guys are already way ahead of this. You're, you want to be able to allow Pennsylvanians to directly manage prescription drug benefits instead of contracting with health care managers to do so. You want to increase transparency into PBM pricing. You want to allow more um, common sense state oversight of PBM contracts. And you want to require a flat fee pricing model so that the state pays a PBM only for the services rendered. And then there's the whole rebate game that we can talk about too. But from your perspective, I want to turn it over to you to, to give our listeners an idea of what your, um, what your challenges are ahead of you and what you plan on um, digging into. Well, so what, where this really came to my attention uh, and the attention of many Pennsylvania legislators on both sides of the aisle was in 2013, Pennsylvania taxpayers through our Medicaid portion of the state budget paid about 1.4 billion in fees to pharmacy benefit managers. By 2017, that amount actually rose to 2.86 billion, which is more than a 100% increase in a four year period of time. So as the state's fiscal watchdog, the, the number one question is, where did that money go? And, and the disturbing part of this was, that I didn't have, and this is a rare instance, I didn't have a direct authority to even review where that extra money went because of the convoluted system we have where the state contracts out with the managed care organization who then they contract out with the pharmacy benefit manager, thus shielding them from Pennsylvania taxpayer watchdog review. Now, the pharmacy benefit manager, most of your listeners may know, but for those that don't, they were basically so so supposed to handle the administrative functions between the pharmacist and big pharma on negotiating with uh, big pharma on the prices um, to make sure that the, the consumers were getting a fair price and on the rebates and to be a fair arbiter across the board with individual retailers. Obviously the system now is significantly bigger and the role of PBMs now is significantly bigger so that you're talking about nearly $3 billion in one fiscal year alone in Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars going to pharmacy benefit managers and us not being able to see what, where that money went and what the public got in exchange for that money. So when I think of what's already taken place and how this onion is being unraveled, the so many layers of the PBM and different contracts, um, the gag clause that's finally come apart where now a pharmacist can actually look at their patient and say, hey, 
there's a less expensive way of paying for this medication. Whereas when that gag clause was in place contractually, they weren't even allowed to say that. So By there's the way, a lot, there's a lot of happening. How, just think about how crazy that is that you weren't able to tell a patient a more affordable way to take the medication that they needed. I mean, I, 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 I scratched my head just how did that even come into existence? Well, what that tells me just from common sense once again is there must be some reason for it. Right. And it's on, it's not, it's not two sided. It's one sided. And it's, let's be honest, it's money. I mean, yes. what else could the reason be? Absolutely. And really the pharmacy benefit manager should be doing things deep into f building formularies, uh, looking out for savings for specialty medications, which are four times, five times, sometimes 10 times as expensive as the average um, prescription. Um, and, and, and I think there is a purpose for them, but certainly not in the, um, in the way that it's being managed and, and grown today. That's so I, I was very shocked to read that in 2017, like you said, Pennsylvania taxpayers paid $2.8 billion to PBMs for Medicaid enrollees. And I'm just, I, my eyes were just like, goodness gracious, because I've really been paying attention to other states. And, and now that this is coming to the, to the limelight, this is extremely important. Well, I, I think it's important to stress again, I get to monitor or, and audit all state dollars and the Department of Human Services oversees the Medicaid budget. Because of this setup, neither one of us are able to actually review the specific spending by the pharmacy benefit managers, which one of the things I call for is that, that's why I call for the state to have direct contracts with the PBMs so that we can hold them accountable and know exactly whether uh, their role, or at least what they're saying their role is, is being executed to the best of their abilities. So what's frustrating also is I have customers, I have friends, I have people that I've known for 10 years who own pharmacies who are the only healthcare provider in a 30, 40, sometimes 50 mile radius. And when the DIR fees really took hold and started pulling back money one month, three months, six months, nine months after the transaction, that's when I like said, when is someone going to jump into this and just unravel the entire thing to really rebuild what a PBM was supposed to do? So I hope that, and I think what's going to happen with the domino effect of states is I think Pennsylvania in support of California and Ohio, I think this is going to uh, create a, um, a momentum. And I think we're going to see other states really taking a look at their Medicaid dollars and their PBM relationships. And I'm kind of excited about it that we're, we're finally going to, I believe, in the, being the hopeful one, that we'll, we will see complete transparency probably within the next two years. Yeah, um, obviously, I think all of those things have a distinct possibility. What I know specifically is good news is that legislators on both sides of the aisle in Pennsylvania, both you know Democratic and Republican, um, and, the, and we have a Democratic governor and Republican-controlled legislature, although both chambers got more narrow in the last election. But in each chamber, there is significant bipartisan support for reforming this system. I had hearings across the state. Republican legislators and Democratic legislators were there. Um, it w some viewed as more liberal, some viewed as more conservative, but they all took a, a very similar tack and interest in this issue. Um, both from the transparency side of it, the dollar figure amount of it, but also the concern that Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars may be going, I say may be going, to actually try to force independent pharmacists out of existence um, and having big retailers uh, potentially take them over. All of those reasons have made this a very bipartisan issue. And I came out with my report specifically in December so that we could tee up legislative action beginning uh, January 1st when the new legislative term begins. So we have organizations like the National Community Pharmacists Association, the NCPA, who has a tremendous amount of data. We also have the Pennsylvania Pharmacists Association, who's very keen on understanding the world of the PBM, uh, led by Pat Apple, who I used to be on the board of their um, their policymakers as to what is up and what is down. And the DIR fee 
What do you know about that, Eugene? And what do you kind of think of this whole uh, clawback uh, system and, and if, if that even makes sense? Well, it, what I make, uh, I've described it internally to, to my team and, and I've even said it publicly now. It's like playing whack-a-mole. Um, <laughs> Because once you, you think you figure it out over here and you sort of knock that, you know, the, the amusement park game, you whack the mole. And once you think you get it on there, some other problem pops it up. Um, and so I think the whole system is so convoluted uh, and very hard to understand that it makes it imp- virtually impossible for anyone to truly get a grip on these fees. For example, we met with some um, of the pharmaceutical industry. And some of their top lawyers met with us. And so this is their job was to negotiate with PBMs. And they didn't feel they ever had a grip on what the actual reimbursement structure was. So that tells me that it just doesn't work. And you're actually expecting pharmacists at the ground level, middle America, trying to run their pharmacy, you know, pay employees, get people their prescription drugs, and also have a life outside of being a pharmacist to try to come to an understanding of these fees and the reimbursements, I think it's virtually impossible for anyone other than the PBMs to understand it, which is a problem. Well, something else that just seems uh, askew, we all know it is, is when a PBM who's managing the money and has the contractual ability to take the money back also happens to own a myriad of pharmacy chains and sometimes there's favoritism there. So that in itself doesn't even, I mean, that's not even an even playing field. So I no. see the frustration from from a multitude of, of, of areas. But guess what? The consumer has no idea what's going on. They look at the pharmacist as the bad guy. Yeah, or Big Pharma, whichever one it may be. They're just mad their drugs cost more than they think they should cost. I mean, that's what the, you know, and because for many um, people, Uh, this medication is critical for them to have, whether it be to live sometimes or just to have a healthier life. So this medication is critical to them and they just don't know why they're paying so much for it. And there's a lot of frustration about that. And the PBM is sort of this entity in the middle that really most people aren't aware about. Eugene, if a listener is out there, they're in their car, they're working out, they're walking, whatever they're doing, they're a pharmacist, possibly a pharmacy owner, What's the call to action, especially if you're a Pennsylvanian, especially if you own a pharmacy in Pennsylvania, what could we do to uh, support you, to support this effort, to be, um, and by the way, not even being biased, non-biased, just being straight up um, data-oriented and, and helping this cause. Like, what, what's the call to action to a pharmacist in the state of Pennsylvania right now? I would say it's pretty easy. It is call your state House of Representatives member, member call your state senator and say, work in a bipartisan fashion. You reference the Pennsylvania Auditor General report, but work in a bipartisan fashion to enact a comprehensive reform of the prescription drug industry in Pennsylvania so that billions of dollars in taxpayer money can actually be used to lower drug prices in Pennsylvania. That's, it's that simple. And say, and let your elected official know, you're going to be paying attention to how they act on this issue. Excellent. Excellent. And you know, there, there's an aspect to this that I think that there's light at the end of the tunnel, because I think that there's going to be a refreshing wave of data. that's going to bring out transparency because eventually the data is going to line up and you're going to be able to compare pricing from one year to the next. And you'll see that the price of a drug may have been changed just based on the PBM contract alone, not necessarily on the ingredients cost, not necessarily on the pharma's changes, but just the contract. So I I think that there's a lot to that. And we have to give pharmacists at the retail level, whether they be a bigger operation or a smaller operation, and this mostly falls to the smaller, but it is across the board, a fair contract process so they can actually negotiate in good faith with the PBM and not get a contract that is take it or leave it. What's the next steps for you, Eugene and your team? What, what, what I saw the, the news article that was, uh, was posted um, just last week, December 12th, it was titled Pennsylvania Auditor General calls for action on PBMs. What's the next step? Well, we're going to continue to travel the state um, through 
um, admittedly, you know, between uh, Christmas and New Year's holiday, uh, take a little bit of a break, but we'll be traveling the state. I'll be traveling the state making the case for reforming the system using my report as the background for that. Uh, we'll be meeting with legislators on both sides of the aisle. Those have already started. Um, those are going to continue. Legislators are already begin to think through how they want to draft legislation. We're going to be part of that process as well um, so that by uh, hopefully by the end of January, we can actually see some some real legislative activity begin. I think this is amazing. I'm excited to to hear that this is happening in my home state, on our home state. Um, and I very much appreciate your efforts. I did say before we started recording, this is an open platform, Polititalk RX. It's all about the policy in pharmacy, in the healthcare system, your office, and anyone that, that you want to let know about this platform is, is enabled and encouraged to come back and talk with us and give us an update. We certainly hope to have you back maybe in the next six months and we can, uh, we can see where we're at. I'd love to do it, Todd. I'd be more than happy to. Eugene, thank you so much for participating on Polititalk RX today. And we look forward to uh, reading some more uh, hopeful headlines upcoming up uh, in January, February. No, absolutely. And hopefully one of those headlines will be Steelers win the Super Bowl. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. You have a great day. Hey, you got it, Todd. Take care. Hey, thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Please go to polititalkrx.com to listen to all of the shows regarding policy in the world of pharmacy and healthcare. If you want to reach out to the show, please reach out to us. You can find us at polititalkrx at gmail.com. Thank you for listening to Polititalk Rx, part of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. If you're in the profession of pharmacy or if you're in the healthcare industry, you can't afford to sit idle and not be informed about your profession. We ask you to share these podcasts with your fellow pharmacy associates, your state and local government officials, and get involved in politics in some capacity, starting with being informed. We must take action, but only when we're educated and understand the issues and policies which lead us to a better tomorrow for our profession. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Polititalk Rx and send us an email at polititalkrx at gmail.com. 